We are in the weekly Torah portion. Please subscribe to this channel. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification so that way you'll always know when a new video is being given. And then you have to like it, comment on it, do what you can, get up in the rankings because then when you turn on your computer and you go to YouTube, it'll be right at the top. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start at Parashat Mitzorah. Parashat Mitzorah is about a person who has developed Surat. Again, we learned Surat is not leprosy, it's not Hodgkin's disease. It's a spiritual disease yeah, yeah. manifests in a physical manner and it is brought about by, the, the rabbi say, is brought about by speaking Lashon Hara. If I speak badly about a person, and by the way, this is normally the parsha that every rabbi will use to go off on a, all the laws of how to do uh, or what to avoid with Lashon Hara. So it's a uh, slander, however you want to look at that. It could be um, a, a course. If you look at a course, uh, if, if I would be giving a course, I would use TMZ, which is the um, or People magazine to show what you should not do and how you can defame characteristics. They, they, I remember they took a picture of one of the starlets who was just walking down the street and she looked, she probably just woke up at the, the crack of noon and she was, uh, I guess, going for a pack of cigarettes or was a little drunk from the night before, whatever it was, but she did not look nice. Oh. And they, they took a picture of her, of course, you have the people who are... Uh, who are um, trying to, what are they called? Pavarotti. Yeah. Who are, uh, Pavarotti? Paparazzi. Paparazzi. Yeah. Paparazzi. Yeah. Paparazzi is the singer, right? Yeah. Paparazzi, who is trying to get pictures of these people to make them look yeah. human again and oh. so on and so forth, to get them off the high horse. The person that asked to be on a high horse to begin with, mm. uh, but now they, uh, they try to get them and make them look bad. Mm. So we can look and say, oh, even they have bad hair days. Okay. <laughs> whatever they're going to, or where they gain a little weight and they're going swimming. Yeah. Who needs to be taking, have pictures taken of you doing that? Now, I, I don't know why you go to public like that. Okay, fine. You can have those arguments. But TMZ, or again, People Magazine, yeah. or Us, or wherever these crazy oh. magazines are, yeah. walk down the aisle of, uh, in your supermarket and you can pick up all these things and see, or without even picking it up, you will see the Lush and Horror Fest that is uh, part of it. If you want to, if you don't want to watch that, you just have to go on TV and see with the news media. They also, or read it in the newspaper, or turn on your internet. There's so much Lashon Hara and Moshe Shemra out, Moshe, Moshe Shemra, which is lies about the person out there, that is ridiculous. Again, a bad, um, a bad headline. That is, the headlines are made to be sensational, okay? They want you to read the article, so they make those and that is the uh, again uh, that would at least a vak lashon hara, the dust of lashon hara, or a dak uh, vak mostly shemra, whatever it's going to be. A vak means dust, so it's either the dust of a lie or the dust of the truth. And the way you define lashon hara, the best way to look at lashon hara is if I don't need to know that information, you've walked into lashon hara. Okay. That's it's the best way to define basic that. Basic gossip, in other words. It might not be a lie, but it's basic gossip. It can be true, 100% mm -hmm. true. But if I don't need to know it, mm -hmm. yeah. and you're telling it to me, oh, why did you tell me? Mm -hmm. For what purpose did you tell me? I didn't need to know that information. I, it's a need to know basis. Mm -hmm. If, on the other hand, I'm going to a business, and I want to go into business with the Ruvain, and you know the Ruvain is a gun if it's a thief, mm -hmm. so you should tell me. As long as you know it, not that you heard. Okay? Yeah. So, if, uh, or you can say, be careful for. But again, you have to be very careful when you're saying that too. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're ruining that person's name yeah. Yeah. for no reason, and potentially no reason. And now you've co it cost them uh, a living. All those things. That would be, uh, that would, again, that would be mostly shame, Ram, more than Lashon Hara, because mm. I don't know it for a fact. So if I know it for a fact, that's what happens. So now, what happens is, in the Torah times, the, God was very sweet to us. Because what he did was, when we would start getting involved in this uh, in, incorrect behavior, Hashem would give us warning shots. And what he would do is, depends on who you listen to, uh, which way you go. First, he would uh, hit your house with tzaras, and then... Uh, if you, and you had to empty a house up, there was a whole, uh, a whole uh, cleansing process of the house. Then, if you didn't listen to the other Ramban says, 
then it would go to your clothing, wow. struck your clothing. And if you didn't listen to there, finally it would hit you. Mm-hmm. So you get three shots before it, it comes to you mm-hmm. personally. And then when it comes to you, what happens is you, are, uh, you will have to, people see that you have saras. They're not going to want to go near you. You're separated from the camp. Basically, because I'm running through this just to give you the overview because we'll never get through the whole project. Mm-hmm. So, but it's very important to understand. You are sep- when you are declared to have saras, uh, on, on the, uh, I'm not declared, when you are suspected of having saras, you have to be separated from the camp. So you're sitting alone. Why are you sitting alone? The rabbis tell us that the reason we're sitting alone is because just when, I, when, as, when the person spoke Lashon Arba, they separated friend from friend. So you need to be separated from everybody else. You're going to quarantine for that one second. And that way you'll recognize what you've done wrong and you'll have time to think about it. And there's not everybody saying, good job, yay, we looked at Lashon Arba. Yeah. No, because it says you have to sit alone. So even, even if so, they would be separated from themselves. From each other, but like there could be multiple, but they'd all be separated from each other. Yeah, okay. and now hopefully there wouldn't be multiples. Right, that's the right because when why do we get why do we speak slander? Why do we speak these things? Because there is no repercussion. Right. If we would see there's a repercussion, we wouldn't. And again, you have people who are have to clear the houses out. Then the clothing is. So we know that we're sick. This person's not a good person. You don't want to be with that person. So uh, ultimately, what's going to happen is he's going to uh, become a pariah to in, in uh, society. And we don't like pariahs. We, we just don't want them. Because they're just going to bring us trouble. Right? So were there multiple people? I don't know. But uh, if they would have to be separate. That's the point. Okay? And like I said, that's all a way to figure out uh, you know, that you're doing wrong. That was God's gift to us. We don't have that today. One, because we don't have the temple. Two, we're out of Israel. This only happened in Israel, too. Uh, it's interesting that the one exception is um, Miriam. Miriam had Saras in the desert because she spoke against her brother, but I believe she's the only case in the entire Torah. Say again? Moshe didn't get Saras. Oh, he got it with the staff. With the staff. With the hand. Right, okay, his feet, right. But he wasn't, but Saras didn't exist at that point. So we would, you're right though. He would have had a momentary Saras. But uh, but, uh, Miriam was for seven days. She would have that, right. (coughs) Okay, so good. Two points, two times. But that, I believe that was all there was. And then until you get into the uh, into Tanakh, then you have Naaman, who was at uh, Mitzara, and yet others who were, but they, again, they were separated. So, by the way, one thing, you have a case of uh, four people with Saras, apparently they did get together, and they're the ones who went into the uh, camp, one of the enemy camps, to find out that, oh, a miracle had happened and they had been cleared out. So in Tanakh, you have one case, I believe it was, in Shoftim, if you remember. So there's one case that we know four lepers who did, four, again, people with Saras, who did get together. They spied on the enemies? And they, well, they were they part were, of the Jewish people, so, yeah, right. The tea was being, <clears throat> the tea was being seized, and the, the uh, lepers, uh, the lepers, they were left outside because they were separated. Right. So they were in the enemies, and the wall, so the wall was close to them. It's like, okay, well, let's go into the camp and see if we can find refuge. Right. Killed, so. right. So that, right. So they. So that's one case. Oh, I'm just want to bring out the, there is a case that four of them did get together for, somehow. So they were outside the camp again. Maybe they do want to get together. I mean, why not? But uh, they're still doing shuva. I mean, it's, you don't. You don't want to be separated from the group. Okay. That that's really the the ultimate punishment of of humans is if I separate you. That is the worst thing for people. They hate to be separated. They like to separate themselves at times, but normally people always want to be with somebody. We're a social animal. There's very few people who don't want to be with somebody. 
Again, there are moments that we don't want to be with somebody, but for the majority of times we want to be with somebody, which is why we get married. Okay? Otherwise we wouldn't get married. Everybody's there, uh, we wouldn't do anything. We would be on an island because, let's face it, you cost money. You do. If I'm friendly with you, the odds are we're going to have to go out. Okay? We're gonna, and now I'm going to spend my money and we're going to see a movie or whatever we're going to do. A cup of coffee is still more money that I would be spending by myself. Okay? So it costs money to have friends. Certainly when you get married, it costs money. When you have kids, you just blew your, your accounts. Okay? So, uh, so why would we want kids? We want to be alone. That's not true. We want to be we're social animals. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, so people, but when you're sitting alone, you're realizing the reason I'm sitting alone is because it's book Lashon Hara. You're going to tshuva. It's as simple as that. When I, if you know, again, if I separate by myself, I'm not punishing myself. If I'm separated from the group, that's a punishment. I want to get back into the group. So I'll do what I have to do to get back into the group. And that means I have to change. So that's what happens. Okay, so now we come into this pro, and he's going to say, uh, what we're doing here, but we're looking at the uh, how to go get out of being a mitzara, the procedure to get us out. Okay, so he says in the uh, in his introduction, he says the unique laws of the mitzara have established that, <coughs> despite the fact that his contamination is manifested in a change in, on his body, it was caused by his degraded spiritual condition. Okay, again, this is totally spiritual disease. Being alone outside the camp gives him the opportunity to reflect on his deficiencies and to repent so that he can once again, once more become worthy of becoming part of his nation. As soon as that change takes place within his mind and heart, the same God who afflicted him will remove the mark of his degradation and he can begin the process of return. This is Rabbi Hirsch, okay? Uh, then, uh, there then begins a three-stage purification process that is unique to a Matsara. The first part of the ritual was performed with two birds outside the camp. It was not a sacrificial service, and the birds did not have to be doves or turtle doves since they were not offerings. They had to be healthy and kosher, but that was all. When that ritual was completed, the Matsara was permitted to enter the camp, but he was still Tame. Again, Tame is spiritually impure. And some of his restrictions remained in force. After a one week waiting period, he could bring the offerings that would complete his process of purification. So here we go. Some of the things binging, I don't know what it is. Okay. Huh? Okay. So uh, Shem spoke to Moshe, saying, Zo to Tia Torah to Messiah, this, this will be to you uh, a law of Messiah. Yom Tarato on the day of his purification. Vehuva Ela Kohen. And he should be brought to the Kohen. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the uh, Rashi points out when it says this should be the law of the Mitzar on the day of his purification. Rashi says, that one is not allowed to be to cleanse him during the night time. Oh. Why, uh, anytime we're judging a case, normally is done during the daytime. This is uh, not, it's not a Sanhedrin type of thing. The only one who can judge this Mutsara is a Kohen. Oh. The Kohen were the only ones who could do it. We learned that last week. And um, if, like we learned last week, if the Kohen did not know what Tzara'at looked like, so then uh, the person, the Tamil Chacham, who did know, had to teach the Kohen what it looked like, to instruct him, and then he could say, and the only thing that the, the non-Kohen could say was, it looks like a plague to me. He could never say it is a plague. Kanega nearly. It looks like one. That's also teaching Derek Eretz, it's teaching humility, it's teaching a lot of things, but bottom line is the only one who can declare a Sarah, a person to have saras is a coin, which is why, by the way, that um, Moshe was not a, a man with saras because there was no coin to announce message uh, to have saras. Ah. Okay, 
It's also the case with Miriam, who could identify her, only her brother. So again, she couldn't be called a, a person with Saras, and as a result, she couldn't be healed from Saras in a normal manner. That was Aaron's problem. So yeah, that's why he said, pray for your sister. Okay, forgive her. She did not know what she did. I don't know how that was. Wonderful lines you came up with that. And, uh, but that is the problem. So I have to have a Kohen who is going to see this, identify it, and that way the person can now do teshuva and can uh, go through the process. So now it says, V'yatsa Kohen. Well, like I said, that's be done. I'm sorry, that's be done uh, during the day. And then it says, he has to go. Uh, oh, yeah. So then the next verse. Ve'atsa Kohen, and the Kohen will go forth, will go out, El Mechut Machana, outside of the camp. Vera uh, Kohen, and behold, and the Kohen will see. Vera Vihine Nirpa Negat Sarab in And behold, the Nega, this plague of Saras, will be cured from the person that had Saras. And Rashi explains. Uh, El mechutz machane outside to out the outside of the camp, chutz l'shlosha machanot outside of the three camps. There were three camps, right? You have Camp Levia, which is the Camp of Levites, Camp Yisrael. Oh, I'm sorry, you have one. I, I skipped. I skipped one. Machane uh, Shechina, the camp of the Shechina, the Divine Presence. That's the uh, the, the uh, Mishkan. Then you have the Levim around there. That's the second camp. Then you have the Israel, the rest of the camp. Well. When that Mitzor is being sent out, he's being sent out all three camps. He's outside the cloud. You've been removed. You, you're on your, uh, you have to leave the island. That used to be the statement. You have to leave the area. That's it. Okay. So now when you're checking him, you have to go outside of those camps. The Kohen has to leave. Okay. So he has to go outside the camps and to check what's going on. Fine. Uh... The Bechor Shor, interestingly, says when it says he's brought to the Kohen, he says the Machara was brought to the outskirts of the camp where it would be easier for the Kohen to come out and to meet him. So he wouldn't have to chase after him. I mean, the guy wants to get back in the camp. So he's, you know, he's up by the border. It's uh, wherever he has to be. He knows the time is coming. He's, he thinks he's healed up, whatever uh, what's going on. So he's going to have to come. Fine. Siva Kohen, so now the Kohen commands. Belakach, as you said, I want to know if he's shocking or good. Belakach, the mita here, states of Arim, and he's going to take for the. Uh, it's interesting. So, it, how does he translate all this? Okay. And he says, Belakach, the mita and he will take for the person who is made, who wants to be made pure. Shtet, siparim, chayot, tohorot. Two living. Clean birds. Clean means kosher. <laughs> normally, t- normally that's what it means. Okay. And then the eight eras, and then you're going to have cedar wood, shni tolaat, and some uh, crimson wool, the azov and hyssop. <laughs> I don't know what hyssop is, but fine, we'll go through this. Why these different? Uh, oh, chayot. Rashi uh, says uh, chayot, which is living animals. That's to exclude a tray fit animal. What is a tray fit animal? Carcass. What? No. no tra- uh, that would be a nevela. A tray for a uh, carcass is nevela. A tray for is an animal that is wounded that will not last a year. That is a tray for. Okay. No, that's not. We today right. call that animal treif, yes. But in, in the Torah, when the real definition of treifa is an animal that was attacked by an animal mm. or something happened, it had an internal problem, and so it won't make the year. Right. That's what pe- many people say. It won't make the year. And that's the definition of a treifa. When we say treifa in the Torah, that's what we're referring to. So what do we call non animals? Today? Chayot, that's what we call them. We, we just, we just, just a, a behemoth is a domesticated animal, a chaya is a non domesticated animal. So you have, and then if it doesn't have, we don't have a name specifically for non kosher animals. 
we call them what they are, uh, Akko and all these other animals that are named. Okay? Mm-hmm. Says Tahoro Prat La Of Tame, and again it's to exclude the uh, Tame of bird, and says, Why? Why are you bringing birds, Rashi says? Lafish and Nagam bind Allah and Hara, because the animal, uh, because Nagam, these plagues are brought for Lash and Hara. Shahu Maase Pitput, a Pitput Devarim, which are when you're just speaking. Lafisha, Huskulatar, Totsuparim, Shapitmat, Semipatvapin, Tame, but sits of call. And so what do birds have to do? You ever wake up in the morning and hear the birds squeaking? Uh, they're squawking all over the place? That's people like speaking Lashon oh. So they're just acting like they're squawking. Mm-hmm. They just want to uh, do that. So that's why you're taking those birds. Taking birds, because that's just as they squawk, that's so also people speaking Lashon yeah. they just they don't use their words that's, correctly. That's interesting. Yeah. Then it says eight eras. Why the cedar tree? The fish in the gun by by in al gasod aruch because the plagues become because of a haughtiness, and the cedar tree is a tall tree. Apparently, it's a strong tree, a haughty tree, right? She told lots. So then you have the scarlet, the crimson wool, and azov ma tiknatu to be for pay that which that which uh, is of. Uh, What's going to fix it up? That was made a week. So he has to make himself small. He has to humble himself from his haughtiness. Like this crimson thread. So yeah, that's why he's doing it. Okay, and then you say, so that's why these different ingredients were used. They're showing the person you are haughty, like this cedar tree. We're going to, you have to have humility. If you have humility, then you can at least start the road to recovery oh. and you can figure out what you're doing wrong and change when it comes to the uh, okay that's and then it says you have to do this oh that's the next verse okay see about Cohen it's interesting Rosh is putting together with that oh no it's hey okay Siva Cohen Siva Cohen so the coin command that he slaughter the first bird El Kli Cheres onto the pottery, the, the pottery, the earthenware vessel. Al Mayim Chaimim on living waters. What's living waters? Note in Atam Techila Bekli. You first put the waters into the vessel. Kadeshi Dam Siport Nikar Behem so that the, the blood of the bird is recognizable in them. Become a Haim. And how much would that be? A Raviyat. You have to put in a three, 3.5 to 5 ounces of this. And so it'll be recognizable. Okay. And uh, does he say here? Okay, no, he's just saying what we just said. Uh, then it continues to say, and Sipo Chayat, and the living one, uh, the living bird, Yikachotai, you will take her, Veda Eret, Eza Eres, and this cedar tree, Yetchnia Tolav, Yeda Ezov. And the crimson wool and the azov, and the tavalotam, you're going to dip them, and this living bird into the blood of the slaughtered bird, al mayim achayim, on the living waters. So he says, Rosh explains, you don't put them all together, you just, it's just, uh, how does he say that? You just um, put it. It says here, the bird is singled out to indicate that it is treated separately from the three other items that are used in this ritual. The cedar wood and hyssop are tied together with red thread. Then that bundle is held in the right hand together with the bird, and they are dipped into the blood water mixture. Okay? That's what's going on. And then what happens? Uh, t- 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 where is it? Now you're going to sprinkle on this person who wants to be cleansed from the uh, from Saras seven times. Tiharon, he will be cleaned. and and you send forth the uh, living bird on over the face of the uh, uh, you know out. You just send it forth. 
Why are you sending it forth, by the way? Why do you have, you remember, you have one bird. One bird you slaughtered. One bird you did the whole thing. You're going to sprinkle it. Everybody would love this and understand it. Sacrifice, sacrifice. It's stupidity, but okay, fine. Uh, they don't understand what sacrifices are. Because it's not in the temple. It's not in the Mishkan. It's outside. It's a ceremony for a cleansing. Okay, but people want to read what they want to read. Uh, okay, that's for all the, the, uh, the Mishiganas out there. Anybody who understands what's going on, they understand it's not a korban. But they also <coughs> send the animal, the other one, free. Why? Why are you sending it free? What's the symbolism there? Right. And this, this is also a bird that they can, they can dip while the person is being sprinkled, but it's like a similarity now that a bird's going out. Right, and? Presumably it's going to be quiet, but it's supposed to represent the person. Kind of thing. Good, it represents the person, and it also says that, je- that you, can always be, uh, you always have the tendency to speak Lashon Hara again, because it's always there. In other words, you, don't, you didn't conquer it, right? right. It, just as it went out, so you always have to remember that you also want to go out from this, but you don't want to speak Lashon Har anymore. It's, it's an it's interesting muster that people give on that. That's what one of the reasons says give, that you, you send it for. I was like, that's, again, why, uh, bottom line is, do we know why? God didn't say why. So it's all a matter of looking at that and saying, what was God trying to teach us? Okay. Right. Uh, he yeah. said for this particular, because it's not a sign of life, so for this particular um, process, it can be any bird as long as it's kosher. Yep. Right. So I just have a mental image of a piece of like a piece of wood and tied together with a red thread to a piece of paper like being dipped simultaneously with a bird that and most people would have chicken into a Well it has to be able to fly away. Oh, okay. So that's why chicken chickens okay, don't no, fly. I'll just say like, they, 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 they hop but they don't fly. Yeah, they, they don't they can fly a little bit. Fly. I'm saying they don't. They're not, <laughs> they're not <laughs> like birds. Part of the fly. <laughs> right. It, it's like it's like there was a. Uh, there was a TV show WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> okay, so Le- Len was Les or Len, whatever his name was. He thought that turkeys could fly, and he throws them off from the. Uh, he's in the helicopter, and he has yeah, to go, and he hear bang, 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 because <laughs> turkeys don't fly. So, so they had wings, but they don't fly. So. Uh, you know the crazy thing is that show has been off the air for uh, I don't know probably that show has been off the air for probably seventies probably uh, uh, <laughs> and that one scene yeah everybody knows <laughs> everybody knows it's so funny it's actually the like like chickens turkeys will roost up in trees so they'll like okay but I'm saying they're, they're they not they can't like sustain flight right, 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 right. <laughs> they can flutter to a tree you said oh they can go way up into trees yeah, Ooh, yeah. but they, they can't like fly off they're, like, cool, cool. they're not like geese they're right like, okay. So that would be so again. That would be the thing. Okay. So uh, yeah. So then v'chibes hamitai her epigadav. So the one who wants to clean has to wash his clothes, his, his the clothes he's wearing. Okay. The gilach ekol se'aro. He has to shave all of his hair. And this, uh, when it comes to shaving, uh, Rashi says for this. Uh, oh, well, I just missed the line. Oh, no, okay, but he's going backwards. Then he washes, after he shaves his whole, all the hair off his body, then he washes him, in, in the, he goes to the mikvah to become tower. And after that, he comes to the camp. He has to still, even though he can come back in the camp, he's still sitting outside of his tent for seven ah. days. He doesn't get to go into yeah. his tent, which means he can't be with his wife. Ah. For uh, those seven day periods. Okay. And how, how did they shave when they had to do that? With a razor. Like not their head or, or face? Oh, so it says like here. Rashi says, Teaches you cannot have a relation with your wife. And so what Rashi learns is, what the rabbis learn, is any place where the uh, hair was. Um, uh, all together. So that's what you do. He says here, the shaving must be done by the Kohen. He, he shaves all of the hair anywhere on the outside from the source body. The verse mentions only the head, beard, and eyebrows because 
These three areas of here symbolize the sin. The head represents hardiness since he considers himself better and more worthy of respect than those maligned. The beard frames the mouth which spoke the, which spoke the gossip and slander. The eyebrows represent the base trait of Sarut Ayin, jealousy, which motivated him to destroy the reputation of others. So Kenos say ours wherever there's a lot of here in one place, that's what you're shaving. Wow, okay? wow. he shaves everything. Wow. Wow. So he's also shaving with his, with his head in that spot. So. With a razor, Correct. so this is not transgressing. Correct. Yeah. Well, God said to do it, so you, you have to do it. Huh. Because you have to, uh, you broke the law. So, uh, you know, well, now people, uh, it, it's not just a crew cut. I mean, you, you have no eyelashes. You have no, I mean, no uh, eyebrows. eyebrows. Wow. You have no eyebrows. I mean, wow. so yeah, let's say you want to shave your head on, like people like to do today, they shave their heads. I see, they're, they're not, not for skin head purposes, but let to uh, shave their head. Yeah. And so, okay, so you t let's say they took off their, uh, some of them leave their beard, which will automatically pay us. Automatically it's pay us if you leave if you have a beard. Okay. Some people would shave the whole thing, mm -hmm. and that takes away pay us. Fine. Uh, so they so the normal person payo is the corners. That that normally would break the uh, the halacha, but here Hashem is saying <laughs> shave it all. But, but once you see a person without any eyebrows, without any so then beard, you know you know that guy has it's a Wow. Yeah. It, it's it's out there. Yeah. Wow. So when wow. it's talking about all hair, is it like arm hair, chest hair? So no, so, well, no, anything like... that's going to be open. Oh, okay. Because you have to see it. So you're not walking around beer uh, today. I don't know what would happen, but today, uh, I mean, in those days, they weren't walking around beer skin. So, it, you know, they weren't, they weren't animals. And so they, uh, they would walk around, cover it up. So only where the hair was visible is what you would have to shave. Wow. So that's why the hair, everything else, they say where you have a collection of hair. The underarms are not seen normally, nor, nor your uh, private parts, not normally seen. Okay, so that, that's why they wouldn't be, I'm pretty sure they're not, I know that certainly the private parts are not shaved. Underarms I'm pretty sure are not shaved. You have another problem with you when men shave underarms. Men, uh, if you're a pro wrestler, or uh, I think it's only pro wrestlers, I don't think other sports do it. But uh, if you shave it, so this is imitating women, and that you're not allowed to do either. <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if there's any other sport that that guys will shave their underarms. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, boxing, you would think boxing. They shave a lot in swimming. Swimming would be a problem. So uh. you're right. I remember the swim teams in, in my school. Uh, they used to shave their. Uh, Right, their whole body. Legs and arms. Yeah, right? they, that would be forbidden. Oh, well, they shave their head, not the not guy, the egg. guy I worked for about... By the way, the legs years. could be a problem because women shave the legs. So it could be that that would also be uh, it would fall into the definition of underarms and so forth. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I knew a guy uh, uh, told me uh, 20 years ago, 20, uh, his son was in high school on a high school team and he said they, they shaved their bodies. Right, right, right. Uh, if so, they don't want to shave the hair on their head, they wear the, the, the cap over their head. Right. But when they would, sh I told one kid he's going to shave his head. I said, "So don't shave off your pants. Ah, it's not going to slow oh, you down." It was, I knew another guy um, in Chicago who worked. He was a prison guard. He worked, I think, at, at the Cook County Jail. That's oh. a tough place. <laughs> and and, he, and he's an Arthur Arthur guy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and he has shaved head, uh, not a razor. Use an electric shaver. And he said he asked his rabbi. He says, he says "Why?" The rabbi says, "Why do you want to do it?" He says, "I want to look mean to these guys." You see a guy with a shaved head, you don't know, you know, the guy's going to just blow up any second. At least that's what he thought okay. the impression was. And everybody said, okay. <laughs> so. I mean, he could have used a straight razor on his, on the head end too. It's on like, he could have used a straight razor on the head. But but not in it. On the payas. But the payas and, and it was the beard. The on cars, the beard. Right? The beard. Also. So the beard he, you can't just clean shaven all the way around, he said. Oh, all the way? Oh, okay. Eyebrows, I mean, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he didn't know beard. Okay. Actually, the beard probably would have made him look meaner. The beard would make right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most wrestlers would have a beard. And, yeah. They look, they look crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. The long, the more unkempt the beard is, the better off. It is. That's how it is. Okay. So, um, yeah. 
So it's uh, right. So okay. So here we get the ex, ex, uh, the uh, explicit command. It will be on the seventh day. Yigalacha kosaro. All of his hair will be shaven again. Who's shaving this? Uh, he was, it says he shall shave off all his hair. But we learned before that it was the kohen. Yeah. So the shaving must be done by a kohen, right? Yeah. Okay, so it says Yigalach, uh, fine, same by somebody else. And so the Kohen is shaving him. Roshov, it's a Kanov, a Kabodinov. What's all this here? His head, his uh, beard, and his eyelashes. Uh, his uh, eyebrows, thank you. They call Se'aro, Yigalach, and all of his hair will be shaven. Vichibes, again, so now you have to go back to say, what is that for? So, uh, that's Rashi saying that's a klal per klal, and that's include any place where there is a semblance of, of here that is seen, it has to be both, a lot of here and seen. Okay, that's why, like I said, you don't normally see the hair of your underarm, you don't, you don't normally see the hair of your chest, you don't normally see hair like that. Okay. And then it says. Right, so he does that. He he washes his clothes, and uh, he shall in, our, in the mikvah, brachas pesaro, uh, washes his uh, his flesh, b'mayim, and water v'tayher, and he is now tava. V'yom hashmini on the eighth day. So then, what happens? Yikach shnei kavasim t'mimim. He takes two complete, unblemished lambs. Okay. V'chavsa alcha bat shnatat t'mima, and one female. Uh, lamb uh, that's one year uh, old, that's unblemished, and three tenths of fine uh, fine flour mixed with oil as a mincha, mm-hmm. and one log of oil. So it says, What's the chavsa acha? What is one uh, f- uh, female, um, what do you call it? You. What's the U for? The chatat, for the sin offering. What's the three tenths of, what's of the fine flour? The nixay shlosh kevasim halalu shechatato v'yashamo shamasor to un nisachem. That goes along with the uh, mincha offering. I mean, that goes along with the sin offering. And the Torah commands that that's what it is. V'log shem echad shaman. And one log of shem and the hizot uh, to sprinkle shev, uh, to sprinkle seven times. Uh, to sprinkle on him on the ear and the other uh, place that he has to sprinkle. Okay. So now uh, the Kohen caused him to stand. Who's Which Kohen are we talking about? Hamid Tahir, the one who is cleansing him, the one in charge of this. Okay. Erhe Ish Hamid Tahir. It takes so that person stands the man who is going to be metahor milfei Hashem before Hashem petachol hamayid at the opening of the door of Hashem. Uh, the the oh, I'm sorry the opening of the ohamoy. Now I want you to see something. Here's my son will appreciate this is bal kriya. You have two words hamita here hamita here. Okay, oh. one is with the shva, one is with a yeah. chirik. Okay, hamita here is the one who's causing the other one to become tahor. Ah. Hamita here is the one who is becoming pasuk yud aleph. Okay, <laughs> that's why I've hamid hakohen hamita here and ish hamita here. If you say it wrong, you said you have to. You just want you'd have to be corrected on. Oh, Okay, fine. Hamta here versus Hamita here. You have, you have, the point is to make a distinction. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's a very important distinction, though. So that, so you said like the, who is the one who's standing him up? Who's the rabbi? Who's the rabbi? The Kohen who is in charge of it, in charge of the process. Would it be the same Kohen or a person? Would it be like a designated Kohen? No, the Kohen's uh, the Kohen on duty. Whoever on duty. Yeah, almost everyone on duty. We, we, there's no, no particular guy there. Okay, uh, so then it says, Levnei Hashem, which is Bishar Niknor, 
the, the gate for later terms, later times, would be Nik Nikanor's gate and Velobaz or Atzman, not in the courtyard, not in the Azar itself, the Fishuhum Kippur, because he has not yet been forgiven. He's still minus some Kippur there, and so he has to uh, still wait. So he goes, Nikanor was uh, a guy who was trying to get doors to the Besamikdash. He donated them, and there was a whole big storm, and there was a whole thing that was going on there. It's a fun Gemara, but it's uh, ultimately it gets there in a miraculous manner. So when he has it, so that's why it's called the Shar Niknor. Okay, and the last verse, So now the Kohen takes the, this one uh, you, one uh, one lamb, sorry, and he brings it as an, a guilt offering, along with the, uh, the log of, of oil, and he waves it as a wave offering before Hashem. And again, uh, I, that's where the whole thing was taking place. Okay, we'll have to stop there. Yeah.